Hi, I'm Sean Evans, co-founder and CEO of My Wine Society. I'm excited today to present to you our company overview, our company ethos, and the direction that we're heading, as well as all the team members and testing that we've accomplished over the last couple of years. But to really sum that all up in a visual way, I myself am a visual person, so it's a lot easier to watch a video than to read a screen. I thought we'd start with a little highlight video of the last couple of years of efforts. It really enhances and advances human human benefit, human uh, uh, life, and uh, the things that we care the most about. And it's part of that distinction that you were pointing out a moment ago about the social media, that distinction between how for so long a lot of superficial or uh, non-significant behaviors have been um, gotten to be uh, part of what people get addicted to. But what if we all get addicted to the things that really matter, that are transcendent, that do have a positive impact, and that get us to all move into the kind of worlds that we all want to belong? It's really, uh, it's really five billion dollar companies in one button. You got, you know, WhatsApp, YouTube, Instagram, um, social media, online education, and Amazon all around wine, giving people that safe space that they can go and talk about their tastings, their new favorite wine, plan a trip to a new wine region, all those things that they'd like to do on Facebook, but it's just, there's too much noise and who cares, right? Well, you can come here and you can talk about all those things safely with a community that shares the same passions. I'm out here representing Oberon on this fine sunny day in Napa. We're looking for a way for our fans, for lack of a better term, to, to interact with the brand and our new space here at Feast It Forward. I was impressed, it's a pretty robust app. It's impressive, you can really explore the world of wine. And I mean the world of wine, not just different types of wine, but wines around the world and connect with wineries and wine aficionados and it just seems fun an app for the winery. So, you know, our customers, uh, wine club members can look up tasting notes, they can buy wine, they can look up information about the winery. And it's just a great way to, another way to get uh, our information out to, to people. Wineries on the other side of the world are now involved in what is Feast of Forward? How do you give back? How do you make a difference? What is your lifestyle? And I think ultimately that's our mission is to engage and entertain on an inspiring level. And I think that that's what the app is doing as well, is really from a, a, a wine platform being able to have a conversation that, that means something. Definitely. And, you know, that goes back to those value-based behaviors and ensuring that we can enforce the kind of behavior that we want to see not only give wineries a place to communicate with their end users in a more robust and complete manner, but also a place for brands to reward users who are doing good in the world. Um, and so that, you know, again, just 
constant uh, tie backs to why Feast is the perfect partner to, to launch the, the platform. Yeah, cheers to that. So as you can see, my wine society was really built to address a couple of core needs in the marketplace. First of which, uh, the wine industry globally is extremely fragmented and we wanted to create a, a technology platform and a company that was able to aggregate the attention of the global wine industry and help bring those brands to life and bring them in front of the right consumer. The next issue that was facing is millennials are consuming and, and producing and purchasing in much different ways than baby boomers and previous generations have. And one of the ways that they're doing that is they want experiential uh, lifestyle uh, purchase power and engagement with their passion driven uh, interests. And in this case, we looked around the space and realized that there was no mobile app technology for the next generation of wine enthusiasts that was giving them an experience where they could consume content and engage with brands through their phone, which as we all know, whether for good or for bad, that's the direction that we're all moving. And this next generation is learning, engaging, and communicating through their, their phones. And for wine enthusiasts, it's hard to do that through existing and general uh, social engagement platforms. Now there's other passion driven um, niche platforms that are allowing uh, the millennial generation to do this in different industries like hospitality, like beer, and like golf. Um, but we're the first ones to do it for wine enthusiasts. So they have a safe place that they feel like they can go, share their experience, track their tasting notes, engage with brands, and most importantly, plan, book, and manage uh, their adventures through different wine regions around the world. So as a company overview, I'm not gonna go through this whole slide, but you can see that we've accomplished a number of different milestones, both in fundraising, through raising our first round, round to help build the app, to then raising the uh, second half of our first round to go and take that uh, different iterations of the app to market and test and learn a bunch about the new different wine regions around the world. And then doing a third round, a bridge round of sorts that helped us actually take our different platform and team and technology to our first market of San Diego. That was really important. We've also partnered with a number of different advisors that are all investors in the app as well in different segments, um, professional business, entertainment, sports marketing, and more that help refine our message and allow us the access we needed to, to be successful in the marketplace. We tested the app in major markets, um, the most of which being Napa, which is obviously one of the leaders in the wine region and gave us the best feedback on what they, the problems that they were seeking and uh, help with. And, uh, and many other wine regions around the world um, so that we could better understand how to address those through app technology. Now the main problem like I spoke with, it, spoke with you about earlier is that the wine industry is extremely fragmented and needs a, a technology to aggregate the global audience and give people seamless connections with each other as they're tracking their tasting notes and visiting different wine regions around the world. The opportunity is by creating this technology and taking it to market, not only are we solving a core issue for both wine enthusiasts and winery brands, um, we're also capturing a, a huge uh, opportunity for revenue growth and scalability because wine is a global uh, phenomenon. Now we've taken a revenue generating and outcome driven approach to taking this app to market. So rather than dumping a bunch of money into cost centers like traditional office space and marketing agencies, we've actually created revenue generating business divisions that accomplish those same outcomes. So by creating our media lab program that places free kiosks inside of wineries, we're able to establish a relationship with those wineries and then scale that relationship across our technology platforms, eventually representing those wineries inside of our app. By developing the blended festival division, we were able to create a revenue generating 
uh, platform that creates the real life experience that we're trying to uh, deliver in our mobile app, as well as grow our data points and touch points in different regions with sponsors, wineries, and users for the app. So we've taken the, these different technologies to our first revenue market after proving all the processes in San Diego, and we plan to scale our West Coast expansion through 2020, uh, national expansion at the end of 2020, and then to the rest of the world in 2021. Now by combining all of these technologies, we're able to offer an integrated turnkey solution for our winery clients, which at the end of the day, the ethos of the company was to give a platform for the underrepresented wineries to reach the next generation of wine consumer. So we're now offering free kiosk programs, uh, freemium model SMS texting services for the wineries, the mobile app technology, where we're building the largest winery and urban tasting room database on the planet, and our in real life live events, including our blended festivals, which like I said earlier, combining all of those into a seamless and easy to use solution for wineries allows them to engage with their consumers longer and uh, ultimately drive revenue and answer that core problem of how they reach that millennial consumer. Now in just three months of being in revenue uh, and, really, uh, and really taking all of these processes that we've been testing and products that we've been testing to market, we were able to successfully execute our blended wine festival in San Diego in August of 2019. We were able to scale our user base to over 5,000 users just in our first market. Um, to, we were able to drive over 300,000 in revenue again in that short three month window. Uh, 50 plus Media Lab contracts placed in our first test product, uh, accomplishing both our 30 and our 60 day uh, milestone for that new, new division. 2,000 plus wineries globally listed on our database and growing every day. To the point now where wineries are hearing about this database and they're reaching out through our website and through the app, wondering why their winery isn't listed and how they can verify their listing and get it placed on the app. And 40 plus uh, sponsors, uh, both inside the app for our blended festivals and uh, eventually in our Media Lab kiosk program, which will result in um, millions of dollars in gross revenue in 2020 for our company. Speaking of revenue, uh, we've listed out projections that we think are realistic based on our, all of the partnerships we've created, their projections for their output, as well as the internal team projections, um, and what, how we think all of the divisions are gonna scale. Uh, the most important and relevant ones are for 2020. Our blended festivals will produce over 4 million in gross revenue next year, having five festival and major urban markets around the US and Mexico. Our app, which is combined currently in this line item with our Media Lab kiosk program, produce over 3 million in gross revenue, which you think is scalable and easy to accomplish, seeing as how we've already reached our initial milestones in the first 60 uh, days of the program. Um, and almost a million dollars in gross revenue through our San Vino brand, which again is a, a rethought way at approaching office space by rather than turning that into a cost center, turning into a revenue generating event space, a test uh, studio, um, wine bar for our different technologies and driving revenue in multiple ways. So as you can see combined, we expect to exceed 8 million in gross revenue in 2020. And then you can see uh, how that scales um, to fiscal year of 23 to be up over 53 million. Now use of proceeds uh, for this round of funding that we're working on right now is internalizing our development team so we're able to scale our technology at will and at the speed that we want, scale our sales team nationally to help drive that revenue. Um, legal is a big one. Obviously we need to ensure that all of our IP is protected, um, but we also wanna prep ourselves for future funding rounds and scalability of the company as a whole, whether that means going the traditional route with large funding through VCs and private equity, or even potentially going to the public markets. We obviously wanna drive user acquisition, um, which is where a lot of that funding is going towards marketing efforts, and then expansion into different markets and expansion of our overall products that we're offering. Exit strategy and options, we've got a lot of different options at this point. And in Q1 of next year, when we completed this funding round, we're gonna address these different options. 
Um, we could do a price equity round um, at the end of next year to continue the capital formation needs uh, to scale the company, or we could potentially go to IPO, or we could do both. Um, and obviously, uh, as we address this with the team that's handling different funding markets, that picture will become a lot more clear, and we expect to have a clear path for the end of 2020 by March. Our executive leadership team that we put together is impressive. Uh, we actually have more people supporting uh, this team that's not listed, um, but Steve Olson comes to us as a fractional CFO with 20 years experience working with startups um, all the way through venture capital, private equity, and um, IPO funding. Derek Sands comes to us with uh, starting in the, um, in the wine industry with EJ Gallo early in his career, um, but then transitioning to over 15 years of sales management experience when we're heading up our sponsorship team as well as overseeing operations. John Blazo, uh, Director of New Business Development, comes to us with uh, dozens of years um, in CentOS and in the corporate environment, um, managing and scale of different revenue opportunities, which is what he's doing for us. Uh, Lynn Gertie comes over to us from Apple um, in a marketing position currently and uh, overseeing the technology products specifically within the mobile application. And then Melanie Rich, our Director of Live Events, who kind of pulls together all of the live event opportunities within the company, uh, comes to us with 20 years of experience doing live events uh, with Pacific Life Health Insurance, which is a, a huge insurance company, obviously. And then our key advisors, just to name a few, again, there are many, uh, one of which is our co-founder, Jeremy Wong, a um, friend of mine, he's a board member, co-founder of the app, uh, and really helped drive the initial concept and ethos of the company. Um, and many others that you can see on here with uh, impressive pedigrees, including J.D. Power of J.D. Power & Associates, uh, Scott Gertie from HSBC Bank, Marcus Jackson over at Miller Coors, Bob Dietrich, who spent a lot of years in the sports marketing field with Genesco, but is now at USA Sports Gaming. Patrick Ciano, uh, who's an investor and a board member um, and was with Insight Risk Management for the last 20 years. So he's watching our back and making sure that we don't make any mistakes. Um, and Hassan Smith, who's the manager for John Legend and has his fingers in the uh, entertainment field and will help drive user acquisition and strategy as we grow there. And then there's about 12 others underneath these guys that all help drive our strategy. So that's our company overview, where we've been, where we're going, and we're excited to uh, have you follow along.